it's like we're launching the space shuttle, I feel like. I think we're good. I see us on YouTube. So okay, um, you're live. Okay. Chair Raymond, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to the meeting today. Um, we need to first call this. Oh, I'm calling the meeting to order today at 3:32, according to my time. Um, and we'll do a roll call. One or more members of the library board may be attending the meeting by telephone, video, or internet conferencing in accordance with ARS 38-431. I'm not sure how to do the other part with the four. So roll call, Chair Sheila Raymond, present. Vice Chair Janet Snigelski. Present. Board member Sam Campana is not joining us today. <laughs> Sheila Collins. Sheila Collins. Oops, sorry, present. Thank you. Frida Hartman. Present. Fred Klein. Fred Klein. We know he'll check, he checked in, but we'll check back as far as getting him. Hello, in. I'm here. Hi, Fred. Sorry. Hello. Thanks for joining. I was muted. No problem. <laughs> no problem. And Marta McClendon. Present. Great. All right. So first we want to go through the public comments. And if you haven't already, if you want to look at this um, list here, did we have anybody submit public comment, Amy or Kira? Um, there was no public comment submitted for this meeting. OK. Then we will move on to the next item, which is the re, um, approval of the regular meeting minutes from March 17, 2021. Were there any issues that we needed to discuss? Hello. Hi, Fred. Yeah, I was listed here as not present. And uh, I was present a few we minutes had you late. Where you came in at um, a later time that you were just a few minutes late. Let me check that real quick. It said that you were checked in, sorry. 334. 334, thank you. At I think he's present. Yeah. So, okay. we, so we see that. Is that okay, Fred? That's okay. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Any other matters? Hearing none, let's do a roll call vote. Oh, I need a motion actually to approve the minute. Also I make move. a motion. Oh, go ahead, Marna. Okay, thank you. Marna um, moves to approve the minutes from a... our last meeting. Great. Janet Smigelski seconds. Okay, so we'll do the roll call. Sorry, Sheila Raymond approved. Janet Smigelski approved. Uh, Sheila Collins approved. Rita Hartman? Approved. Fred Klein? Approved. And Marta McClendon? Approved. All right. Thank you very much. Now we get on with the regular meeting agenda. Item number one, which is the Rio Montaña Library Services. This is a topic for information and discussion. Um, Melissa Orr, Senior Library Manager, will discuss the current and proposed library services at Rio Montaña Park. Melissa, All right. thank you for joining. All right, Hello. here we go. Um, this here is a picture of the Rio Montaña Park uh, building that is located in East Scottsdale. It is located between uh, Shea and Via Linda on 132nd Street. It uh, sits on a seven acre park that's maintained by the city of Scottsdale's Parks and Recreation Department. It has a playground, picnic areas, ramadas, tennis courts, a basketball and a sand volleyball court. So next slide, please. Okay, before we get into details about how it came about that we um, kind of took over uh, use of the facilities here, I wanted to give everyone a little history 
Um, I think most of us know that Palomino, which was opened back in 1995, um, was an 18,000 square foot shared use facility on the campus of Desert Mountain High School. And it was voted in November of 2018 by both the Scottsdale Unified School District and the city of Scottsdale to phase out the longstanding IGA. Uh, that was to be effective on June 30th of 2020 with uh, our operations ceasing on May 21st of 2020. Um, at that time, the school district was to take over operations and they would transition it to a school library. Of course, with the pandemic this past year, Palomino did close at the same time as the rest of our buildings, which was in March of last year. So a little bit of history more on um, providing services. Even prior to the decision uh, to phase out the agreement, library management had been meeting to discuss um, the new strategic plan. We were wanting to find out what our communities all around the city were interested in. Uh, of course, this included surveys, focus groups, meetings with our board members, thank you very much, friends. Um, outreach visits and so many things that we were doing to be inclusive to make sure we were hearing and doing what our community wanted us to do. So we were already uh, aware of what everyone was asking us to do at the time, um, but what we also wanted to do was to find out what that population in the Palomino area was looking for. And we did find out from them um, that access and customer convenience that rose to the top of everyone's list. So when we found out that we were closing, we knew that we had to find a satellite location. And it was something again, that was already in the forefront of our minds, but knowing that Palomino was closing um, really made us know that we had to get to the situation where we had something to provide for that community. Uh, most of you may know as well that for many times it was taken to city council for us to close Palomino and that community there was very vocal and they were very passionate about having library services. So our management team was very um, committed to listening to their needs and their concerns and providing what we could for them. In finding a satellite location, uh, we looked in that area. We had been looking at the different uh, building fronts and other park areas around there. And um, lucky for us, the satellite location of Rio Montaña was the best to suit the needs of everything that we were looking for. The public let us know, again, they wanted the access, they wanted convenience, but they were also wanting to have some additional programs. Palomino, at that point in time before closure, was not having as many adult programs and very few children's programs. So they were wanting us to continue some of the programs that we were offering and add some additional ones. So this satellite location is a 1,551 square foot building at the Rio Montaña Park, which is luckily only 0.9 miles away from Palomino Library. Now, in order to get the building, and we'll, we'll look at a video and we're gonna look at some of the before and after and some of the things that we did with uh, Rio before we had to stop due to COVID as well. But to get the building ready, we had to get some um, funding ready and we had to get some of our partners ready. So uh, I wrote a grant with the uh, State Library and SGIA construction grant and we were awarded uh, $25,000 to be able to take a non-traditional building and create like a mini library outreach type um, situation there in this, uh, in this beautiful neighborhood, as you can see by the uh, lawn here at the park. So we were able to procure uh, getting the, uh, the grant to be awarded to us. 
And then we had to start working with how we're going to make it functional for all the things that we wanted to provide to that community there. So we had to work with our partners, which were our uh, facilities department. We worked with city IT. We had to work with uh, numerous partners in our uh, organization to get us ready for the things that we knew we needed to do for that neighborhood. Uh, Amy, if you can go to the next slide, we're gonna do a quick video here. Kara took this. This is the after, this was very recently. So we're going to show you here just a, a brief tour, and then I'm going to show you some before and after and some of the things that we've done. Amy, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. This is Kira Peters giving a quick little tour of Rio Montaña Park for people who have not seen it. Uh, here is a library book return. It's a nice open grassy field. This is a nice grass area where the library can do some programming outdoors. Right here is the building. This is a nice little program room the recreation department used and now the library has refurbished for programming so you can see it's a nice space for programs. And this right here is the playground which has been recently redone so it's a beautiful playground and fire station is right there you're looking at the fire station Outdoor restrooms are right here. Outdoor restrooms. And again, there is the fire department. This is a really nice park area. Again, with a room for library programming, outdoor space for library programming, nice opportunities to work with parks and recreation, nice parking lot. So this is Rio Montaña Park. Hope everybody enjoyed the tour. And I am going to sign off. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kira, for that uh, tour of Rio Montaña. Can we go to the next slide, please? Hello, everyone. Okay. So here is a picture of the building. So. Uh, when we were working with Parks and Recreation to be able to take on uh, responsibility for this building, the only thing that they had been using it for were for some meetings that they were booking there and for ballet classes. So if you look at the picture on the left, there were ballet bars, uh, mirrors on the wall, and the floor was at, more conducive for obviously dance. Um, what we had to do is we worked with our facilities department and they had uh, different companies come in. You can see the during photo there. They had to rip out the um, mirrors and uh, then they had to fill in the wall there. Uh, if you look to the right, they painted. We had uh, we were able to choose carpeting and um, change this little space in about a two week period to have it to look the way you saw it in the video that Kira provided. Next slide, please. Here's some before and after pictures. Uh, the left was the closet prior to. One of the things with Palomino's closure, we made sure that none of the furniture or anything there uh, went to waste. So you could see the tables and chairs and things that were there prior to us taking over the building the chairs and everything, the tables that are in there in the second photo came from Palomino. Those were still in very good shape. We repurposed some shelving that they had in their back. So the shelves to the right are for children's materials or any materials that we're going to be using in our programs that we have going forward. Over to the right is the book drop. The book drop that was at Palomino, there were several there. We wanted to have a book drop in this location. So as soon as we officially closed with the uh, school and removed the book drop there, we took over the best one that's on the left-hand side and repurposed um, it there and covered it in our uh, normal covering that we have on all of our book drops that are external book drops there. Also, the playground, the Parks and Recreation, we're already in the process of uh, revamping a lot of the playgrounds at the parks. So the playground area on the left was prior to the uh, 
new uh, installments that they created this past November. So the two pictures to the right are from this past uh, November, and they do incorporate some literary components to them. There's the ability to do music, and there's some nursery rhyme uh, things there for the kids to enjoy. Okay, next one. So even prior to some of the changes that were happening in the building and before Palomino closed, we wanted to get the community used to knowing that some programs were going to be at Palomino and some were going to be at Rio Montaña. So we kind of divided the amount of programming that was happening and we were publicizing them already ahead of time to uh, be held at the Rio Montaña building. So some of our programs were pre-construction and some of them were after. This is a picture here of a stay and play uh, series here to the right. We started in the summer with our summer reading program. Uh, one of the first programs we did there was an adult program and MUFON is um, a UFO program that we had and we had a very good turnout for that. We had several upcycling craft series uh, that we held in the building. We had the McDowell, Son McDowell Sonoran Conservancy and several other organizations come in and present during this time period. We had several uh, stay in place series and books can. And we also created a few family programs, the Scottsdale Heritage Connection Fund. And we held one story time for families with special needs. And we were getting ready this past year to have almost like a soft grand opening. We were hoping to have a micro event there. We were going to have our library book bike. We were going to have um, the ability for everyone to sign up for cards and maybe have uh, different venues out there, very similar to our ultimate play date to kind of kick off more of the things that we were hoping to accomplish and do in that, um, in that space for us. Next, please. So that is something, again, we're hoping for our future. Uh, most of you are aware that we have been wanting to put a hold it and lend it locker out there. Um, as the video was showing, the long side of one of the buildings would be on the outside of where the hold it and uh, lend it machine would be. Hold it would be for people who are wanting to pick up their items, which was, again, one of the biggest things we heard. They wanted convenience. They wanted to pick up their items at a time that was convenient for them. And so the hold it machine and the lend it machine, when we do get them um, here in our uh, library system, would be available 24 seven. And so that would offer a convenience that not even our other libraries of course have. So we're still holding out for um, getting those installed at that location. We also have the ability to possibly put a, a six location of eight books to go there. So uh, we have that in the works now. We've had an, a group that has contacted us to let us know they're interested in placing another one. We suggested this location. And so we're uh, gonna be working with them soon to see if we can make that a reality. And Story Walk. Uh, we've also written a grant to uh, incorporate a Story Walk out in this location. And a Story Walk, if you're not familiar, takes a uh, picture book that contains uh, movement activities, kind of like we do with our Books to Boogie. And you place those around the perimeter of the park. And so as you are walking with your children or your dogs um, or whoever, um, you're able to read a story and know that it came from uh, the Scottsdale Public Library. And it would be something we would change out possibly on a monthly basis so that it would remain fresh and timely based on what's happening in the library world or in the world um, in general. Um, and the other thing we want to do is we're next door, as you saw in the video, to the fire department. And so we've already talked to them about incorporating some of the programs and things that we do with them. And they're very excited. They want to work with us on that. And so I believe we have a good future um, that we can look forward to in serving that community in that particular building and that venue. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer those at this time. Fred?
Amy, are there any comments or people with their hands raised? Fred and then Frida, I think. Fred, if you have your question, you'll need to unmute yourself. Otherwise, do you want to, um, Frida, I see you're unmuted. Do you want to go first? I can. Yes. Okay. Oh, there's Fred. Uh, go does ahead, someone Fred. else want to go? Go ahead, Fred, and I'll follow you. Okay, thank you. I, I just want to know how this hold it and lend it uh, business works. Well, it's a good question, and it's new technology that hasn't been utilized here in the state of Arizona yet, but it's very similar to um, the Amazon boxes that you can uh, pick up your items from. It's also similar to the Red Box, so if you're wanting to uh, get a movie or a book out of there. So there are two different systems. And the way this is set up here, I don't know which one is which. And Mandy's on the call and she's worked very hard to make this a reality for us. But the hold it system would have your holds in there. You would be able to take your library card. Uh, it would have to be active and um, up to date, of course. Use it to check out that item and you there is a place to return it there along with our um, return box that's out by the road, but then you also have the ability to return it back into the machine. So we would work as a library system to pull the materials that someone wants to hold, just like we do now. Instead of it going from Civic Center to Mustang, it would go possibly from Civic Center out to this hold locker. A uh, person would go there, they would use their card to get the material out, it would check it out to them, give them a receipt, and then they would be able to return it at their, um, at their leisure. The lend it machine would be for materials, maybe new materials that we have, and you can get it based on availability. So you're able to see a menu of the items that are in that machine, and you can browse. So you would be able to look at it, use your card to check out the materials, just like you did your hold. Hmm. You vote in your request. Uh, how, how do you make a request? You would make your request as you do uh, on the uh, with the other libraries. You would have the ability to choose uh, that location to be the hold pickup. So that's sort of like a, a dispenser machine. Correct. You stick Maybe your card in and... It's like the peanuts come down at the bottom. Is that it? There you go. Yes. And Fred, we, we have a request system in our system. This is Mandy Carrico. Um, so, that so, so that a patron doesn't have to travel from branch to branch to branch to pick up an item. If the item isn't at the branch that they're looking for, we can have it sent there for them. So they can make that request in person. They can, they can call into our call center make the request. They can go online and just order it. Um, and they can have it sent to whatever branch, or when we get this hold it machine, they can have it sent to this machine, which some um, may want to do because if you're in Palomino and with the, if you're in that community and the library is closed, it would be a closer drive than one of the other branches and or it is 24 seven. So people may choose it based on the hours and being able to get it later. Okay. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. And we were looking at one that was uh, going to hold 200 items. So um, we, there were different options. It, of course, would be dependent upon budget. Frida, do you have a question? Yes, I have a couple of questions if I could. Um, the first one is, um, do we have any data on the usage of Rio Montaña and how that compares to our expectation for the usage and how that's, how that's trending? Well, we did have to stop. Um, I, I have numbers and they are comparable, if not better than some of the numbers that we were seeing at Palomino before they closed. With Palomino, there was always a parking issue. We had stopped having adult programs. We didn't have the family programs and their hours had been greatly reduced. So we don't have like a one for one comparison. And if you saw back, I think our programs were from July of 2019 to March of last year when we had to stop. So we don't have a lot of data that we can say, mm -hmm. uh, but we did have, um, I can tell you that the craft programs and the um, books to go, the youth programs were as comparable as any other branch in the library system, if that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that, uh, would that mean then that the, the room that you showed us that had been 
refreshed and so forth is not available for meetings still. Is that correct? It is not available for meetings. None of them are at the moment. And when we took over um, kind of the operation of that building, they were being used for parties or for rentals, but when they gave it over to us to oversee, we do not book it for any reason other than for um, library purposes. Okay. So no one outside uh, can uh, reserve that room. Okay, but the hold it and lend it area is, is open, I gather, correct? That would be outside and uh, part of the video, and I was going to stop Amy, but it was just flowing very well and I didn't want to stop it. Along the uh, right side of the building, if you're facing it. Um, so yeah, if you can go forward on that. We can Frida, show you. did you mean open as in currently operating or open as in it's outside? Open is currently operating. It is not. That is a no. future. Um, that is a future plan. It's a future plan. We yes. we lost our funding to start that process when COVID hit. Yes. Okay. So that is not available anymore. No, ma'am. That's why it's on the future slide. Yeah. Okay. I see. So yeah, I, yeah, I was going to ask. Um, I, I that was a little bit unclear to me. So thank you for clarifying that. And so. When it does reopen, then I assume there will be issues around security and cleanliness, sanitation, and the rest that need to be addressed. So what will happen, it's not going to be like Appaloosa where you go inside the building. It's going to be outside where you see this visual right here. So those machines are designed to be outside. We were looking at the ones um, that would work in the Arizona heat of course, so the only time you would be able to get inside the building is if a library staff member is in there presenting a program. Mm -hmm. But outside is where the hold it and lend it machines would be located and those would be available 24 seven. Okay, okay, now I understand. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Any other questions? Okay. By the okay. way, this, this is, I'm sorry, this is Frida. Can I just add one more thing? Of course. Um, I, I think this is a wonderful resource. And, and certainly for those uh, who went to the Palomino Library and were really looking for something that was not too geographically far for them. And it seems like there's a great deal of potential here. So in terms of the facility as it is now, and then a much longer projection, it would seem that given budget or, or given other kinds of funding, that there's great potential to really expand and maybe have some type of a, more of a, an internal um, facility uh, in addition to that, which is external now, it seems to me. Here's but I want, want to say thank you for providing this. You bet. Our intention uh, all along had been to offer more of the services like you're seeing there in neighborhood areas. And also, as we were looking at Appaloosa to do um, the Pony Express, that had been originally thought to be a way to get into our senior centers and to some of the other services where there might not be a library as close. So we were looking throughout the city to find other ways to do outreach is kind of what we're calling it or uh, express services. So our ultimate goal is to definitely go further with this. Of course, funding and availability and those things will always have a, a, a bearing at the end. But thank you, Frida. Thank you, Melissa. Appreciate your presentation. It was very informative and very exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do here. Thank you. Um, yes. The next item is the strategic plan process update. Here, Peter, Community Services Administrator, and Amy Herring will update the board members on the progress of the library strategic plan. This is a topic for information and discussion for the board. 
Kira? Chair Raymond, thank you uh, very, very much. And I am going to take the lead. And Amy is included in this. And you'll see Amy's initials there because Amy has been the person tracking our progress in our project management software system called Invisio. So she can chime in. Um, I am going to keep it brief. And you can all have a copy of the progress of the strategic plan. But briefly, just so everybody knows, I know we've got some new um, board members, we are in year two of the library strategic plan. So our strategic plan was implemented in 2019, and it's going to take us through 2022. This plan, we really, the library uses this plan. Um, this is our guide. This is taking us into the future. We spend a lot of time on it. After year one, we got a group of people together, including um, then Chair Collins to help us modify and keep this plan flexible and usable. So right now, we are in year two, and what you're looking at right now is a snapshot of the progress that we have made within year two of the strategic plan. Um, with COVID-19, this plan has had to be flexible and we have had to modify, but you'll see in this report how successful that we have been in making progress. So I think what I'm going to do, Amy, if you don't mind, I'm just going to briefly, first of all, we have five goals. Um, well, actually, let me talk about Amy. I'm sorry. Here, let me go back. So you'll see here that we're 51% making progress through this plan. And it's nice and it's color coded here. Green, red, blue. Blue is completed. Red is delayed. Green means on track. Gray status pending. So this is a really nice system um, to help us monitor our progress. And then if you can go on down, we have five main goals in our strategic plan. The first one is to improve customer service through convenient virtual and safe in-person access. So with that goal, we are 48% through. And on my report, instead of going through each of these strategies, we've got strategies under each goal. And then internally, we also have tactics. The tactics get very, very specific on how we are going to do this work and who is assigned to the work. But for purposes of this meeting, we have the goals and the strategies. So goal one, the improved customer service, the things that I wanted to highlight within this goal is that strategy number one is 100% complete. Um, COVID-19 really pushed us into high gear with this when we really had to make sure that our public could conveniently access the library virtually, curbside, drive through in all different ways. So I really want to commend the senior team, Mandy Carrico, especially for working on policies and procedures and processes to make sure that our users could get to the library. One of the examples of that is being able to register for a library card online. So making great progress with goal number one, which is improving, again, improving customer service through convenient, virtual, and safe in-person access. Goal number two, is inspire and develop staff to provide high quality COVID sensitive services through innovation, care and trust. As you'll see, we're 51% through with this goal and the strategies that I want to make note of um, is strategy 2.2 is improve internal staff communication with a focus on transparency. This strategy right here, Melissa Orr and her team have been working really hard to make sure that we have great transparent communication between library leadership and our frontline important staff. So as you can all imagine, especially with the pandemic, we have had to pivot, we've had to pivot quick, and that can be really confusing when you're making changes and you're changing hours and you're changing the way you do things, which can be very scary and frustrating um, for staff. So this has really been important to the senior team to make this a priority and really focus on this. So it's a strategy that we're really working hard at. And we just recently had a, um, we called it a town hall. It was a virtual town hall where it was myself, the senior managers, where we talked about the hot topics happening in the library, and then opened it up um, conversationally, virtually, where people could use their microphone and ask us questions, they could chat, they could submit an anonymous question or concern. So this is a big focus for us, because we really strongly believe that the happier our staff are, and when they feel well, well prepared and well informed, the more successful we will be as a team to provide services to the public. The other one that I wanted to make special note of is that strategy 2.3, which is develop a mentorship and um, cross training program to enhance employee knowledge and cultivate a talent pipeline. So we work in government, so it's very difficult for us to say, oh, I'm grooming so and so to take take over in this role. But what is important is that our staff feel prepared to, if they want to promote or change when opportunities arise. So because of COVID, we haven't 
exactly been able to, we wanted to implement, it was called a shadow program. We still have it in planning process, but where library staff at different levels, different positions can shadow another person to see, huh, would I maybe want to work down with Becky Galvin Butler working with the collection and collection management? Or, hey, would I ever want to be a library director? Let me shadow Kira one day and see how she likes this job to ask questions. So that's another thing that we're really, really focusing on. So again, staff development is important to this library library system, and it is truly what makes us successful. So moving on to goal three, goal number three is to promote and advocate for the library through communication, marketing, and partnerships. So this one here, as you will see, we're 47% through with that. Improving the library website, which is a little bit out of our hands because that's really um, with city IT, but we will work with them when it is when we're ready to um, improve the light, improve the city's overall website, which will include the library. You'll see their strategy 3.2 is improve engagement with the library board to promote advocacy. We completely understand that COVID has made this a little bit harder, but I'm very happy, especially I know we're going to be talking a little bit later about the board liaisons with the branch staff, because I think then the library board will really be hyper focused on what's happening in the branches, because despite COVID, um, there is still a lot of good things happening in the library. And the more that we can make sure you're an informed board, the better you can advocate and promote. So that's a really important one there. Moving on to goal number four, focusing on inspiring value-driven COVID safe library outreach. So this is where we've already started to utilize the book, light, book bike. Melissa's presented on that before where we're using the book bike to get out to some of the day relief centers that are helping people experiencing homelessness. 4.3 is um, maintain presence and participation in specific community events when safe to do so amid COVID-19. So really the city itself really has had a lot of events and programs happening, drive-through events, um, all sorts of things. And the library is always actually quite at the forefront. And people are always asking us, we've got the library vans that were very involved in that despite not being able to have in-person events at this time. And then the final goal is goal number five, which is enhance and maintain library facilities. When we initially did our community outreach and did a big survey, one thing that was really apparent was that people appreciated the library facilities, the beauty of the libraries, how they were laid out, how they were maintained. So we really want to make sure we're paying attention to maintaining our library facilities, improving as we can. Um, the first one here that we thought was going to be on delay was um, strategy 5.1, which is expanding the Civic Center story time room. And really, while the CIP portion of that project was delayed due to COVID, we are actually making fast progress on phase number one of that project, which includes really the space adjacent to the actual story time room is staff space. It's the adult services and youth services staff, 24 staff members are there. And part of this whole project was giving that area a big facelift. It was some of the oldest furniture in the city with the oldest carpet. So really we have, I wanna say one of the positive silver linings of COVID-19 is some of the funding that we weren't able to use with what we normally would do, regular programming and things like that. We shifted that funding to help get phase one, the staff space of the story time room complete. And that will be complete by June. And then as most of you probably know, the city, city council is starting the budget process, um, the story time room or sky room as we have hope that will be, that's part of the design is to have it be a sky room, will be part of a CIP that we hope will get approved and funded so that we can start actual expansion of the story time room space in the new fiscal year. The other important thing with facilities is we've got a really good strong relationship with our facilities team in the city and you'll see strategy 5.3 suggest improvements um, actively inspect and communicate with facilities about custodial performance and library branches. And that also includes all the COVID cautious um, safety protocols that we've had to implement shields places adhesives on the ground hand sanitizing stations it's been a lot of work making sure that our facilities have been safe during COVID 19. 
So everyone in a nutshell, that is the progress on our strategic plan. What we have been looking forward to is doing another community survey coming up soon so that we can revamp again and get ready to for a strategic plan, a refresh, revisit our goals so that really after 2022, we're prepared with um, an updated strategic plan. But again, and I want to recognize and thank um, board member Sheila Collins, who was really a great help with this and continues to be to make sure that we're using words that are action oriented, things are measurable, you know, we're really paying attention to how we are being successful with our strategic plan. So um, I am happy at this time to answer any questions. And Amy, forgive me, I realize I just totally talked about the entire strategic plan. So if you have anything to add, please do. I think you covered it well. Thanks, Kira. Good work, all. Oh, thank you. All right. And Janet, I see you have your hand raised. Yes, I do. Um, first of all, I, I want to say that um, I do see the silver lining here because, um, and the, the new board members won't know this, we were very um, for um, online registration and renewal of library cards. And in the past, everyone had to come in. And that was a real sore spot with patrons. And so I see that that automation as a result of COVID getting done very quickly. And I really commend everybody for doing that. I think it's a great thing that happened. Um, and that's a positive from the whole this whole experience of 2020. Uh, the other thing is I would just like to ask that we um, get emailed this presentation because it is very good. Kira? It of is course. in your inbox now. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. And like I said, I think everyone's doing a, a phenomenal job. It's been a truly unique experience, but there have been some real uh, silver lining points that have come out of this. Thank you. Thank you for saying that, Janet. Any other plan, any other questions, ideas on the strategic plan? And if not, we will definitely continue. Oh, Marna, was that you? A fast hand raise, Janet? <laughs> Are you high-fiving me? Yeah, <laughs> I'm high-fiving exactly. I just want to say, well done, staff. Thank you. And everybody has been. I'm glad that Janet, Marna, thank you for recognizing it because it has been an unusual year, but it has, it, the good news is, and I'm sure the senior managers would agree with me, things that in the past I think would have taken a long time because our city was an emergency, it was, e I don't want to say easier, but it was definitely um we were able to make changes that were approved much quicker to better serve our patrons. And I think what we're finding is a lot of these changes that we made as a result of COVID are going to continue to live on. Curbside here at Civic Center is a prime example of that. Um, you know, we'd kind of thought about that before, but when COVID hit, um, Mandy and her team were on it, they implemented it, and this is something that's going to stay. Same with the online library card registration. So there are some silver linings, and I'm glad that, that we could take advantage of those. Thank you, Kira. Really appreciate all of your hard work and the staff as well. We're going to go ahead and move on to the patron comment report. Um, do you have a, where you can view it um, for the library board if you haven't already? Um, Kira Peters, Community Service Administrator, will present and discuss library patron comments in the monthly report to the board. This is a topic for information as well as discussion. Thank, Thank you, you very Kira. much. Thank you, Chair Raymond. Um, so one of the things that I noticed, and I know that you guys have all read this, so I don't need to read these again verbatim, but one of the things that I noticed about the patron comments was the theme of great customer service. And as a matter of fact, as I was preparing for the board meeting, I was taking note of even these library staff frontline names to make sure I send out a thank you card because the customer service that the public library is providing in Scottsdale is, is shining and our staff really care and it comes through in these patron comments. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to notice first was um, there is a, let me see where it is here, what comment it is. I guess we don't need to know, but they're talking about um, Arabian and Amy, the staff member at Arabian Branch the, who helped a woman. And she really just said that I really appreciate the kindness and consideration that I received today and I will be sure to spread the word. 
I really do believe that when people have a positive experience at, within an organization or at a site, they will share that out. So I'm happy to hear that. Um, one of the other areas that I highlighted here was Monty, who works here in the youth area of Civic Center Library. There's a comment there from a person who had just come back to being at the library after being gone for far too long. Monty was very helpful and friendly. Not only did he provide a great tutorial, but also gladly renewed my family members' cards. Also, the Noasis staff was great. Excellent experience all around. Um, even the comment right, right above, um, they were talking about staff members, Matt and Kate, both extremely helpful. And then, she, and then the person says, made my day. Please give them a raise. <laughs> so I liked that too. Um, but anyway, that's the theme that I noticed here. Um, the other theme that I am starting to hear, not just via these comments, but actually through emails directly to me, is the community wondering about when Arabian Library is going to open up. And you probably all noticed that. Would like to know when Ara Arabian Library will open for walk-in business. Seems a bit overdue. So really right now, the plan for Arabian that is on our radar. And the reason that we cannot open up Arabian right now is that we need staff to be able to open up that building. So um, I attended the city's city council meeting last night where they talked preliminarily about the budget. And just so all of you know, our positions are still in the library. It's just a lot of our positions are sitting vacant. That budget has not been swept, but the city is still being very cautious on how much we save. Um, I'm hopeful as things keep continuing to trend in a positive way, budget projections revenue is coming in higher than the city anticipated that really in the start of the new fiscal year, we'll be able to fill some of those vacancies and, and open up Arabian Library. Um, we do not have a date for that and we wanna be very clear with the public that there is not a date, but we are hopeful that some of those staffing resources can come back to us and we would be able to open up Arabian Library. If we did open up Arabian Library, it wouldn't be similar to our other system or our other branches. It would not be open as it was before. It would be modified, reduced hours. And we'll continue to keep you posted if we can get some of those positions to where we are able to get those positions filled so that we could have staff to run the library. Because there are library staff at Arabian now manning the drive through It takes a lot more work than I think a lot of people realize. And at minimum, we would need four more staff members to be able to open up that building. So I make sure to keep my supervisor, Bill Murphy, aware of that. And again, I'm hopeful that as the city recovers economically from COVID-19, we will be able to open up that library. So I think, Chair Raymond, those were the main things that um, I noticed here. There was a comment about mask wearing, and that continues to be be, um, if somebody has a medical reason for not being able to wear a mask, I know sometimes people get frustrated if library staff will come up but and approach them, but we do tell all of our staff that if someone's not wearing a mask to ask them about that. So we can work on some ideas of if a public member has already been addressed by a staff, I think it might have even been Janet at a, at a prior meeting talking about maybe giving somebody a sticker or somebody gave this idea so that you know they've already been talked to and there's a reason they're not wearing a mask. But um, safety is our priority right now, especially amongst the pandemic. So um, at this time, we're going to continue to um, kindly approach people and ask them to wear a mask. Thank you very much, Thanks. Chair Raymond. Thank you, Kira. Are there any questions or comments people would like to make here? It looks like Marna has her hand raised. I Raymond. do. Thank you very much. Um, in hearing what you're saying, if we are hoping with the more optimistic budget um, conversations that are mm -hmm. happening, do we have a good resume pool? You know, you hear about now it's difficult to fill positions. So um, do you feel confident based on your applicants that when we move forward to filling positions, you're going to have a good pool to choose from? You know, Marna, um, that is a great question, and, and I will have the senior managers chime in if they have a different opinion. But what we've been finding now, luckily, is because a lot of other public library systems have reduced that there are qualified people that work in libraries that are looking for jobs. So some of the positions that we have received approval to fill, um, unless Mandy or Melissa tells me otherwise, I think we really have had quality candidates apply and get jobs. I think we just recently had an example of um, a woman who worked for the city of Mesa. We had a job opening here. She came over and interviewed and she is now working with us and is stellar. So um, that is working in our benefit. Um, Mandy, Melissa, do you have a different opinion? No, Kira, that's correct. Um, 
the few positions that we have been green lit to hire the um the issue is how do we choose which is not a bad issue to have <laughs> yeah i agree all right that's good to hear thank you um you know of course they should want to come to scottsdale <laughs> library but you know you do hear things about the difficulty mm -hmm. now with filling positions so i i am grateful to hear that um well done thank you are there any other questions or comments I see none. None. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is the library board member branch liaison. And I'm going to talk to you about the goals of assigning the board members to advocate and engage with specific library branches. This is a topic for information and discussion. So what I would like to do first is to tell you how this is seen, um, what this project means. and. It first started out, Janet suggested two Christmases ago, hey, how about we divide up and we take treats into the different branches for Christmas to let them know we appreciate what they do for the community as well as for us as patrons. And so that's how it started. And then the discussion then shifted and said, you know, maybe we should have a liaison. We've already got assigned individuals. Let's, let's change this and become liaisons between the staff and the library board so we would know i don't know what's going on at every single branch i'm one person so if we split it up then everybody can report back to each other so that was an idea there um ultimately what this goal is is to have the for us to liaise with the staff and then get that going so that we're not just a face on a poster that we know more about what's going on in the branch that if they have events in your assigned branch that you attend several of those events so that you're not picture as i said that you're supporting you're talking to the staff we want to move that when we can have the volunteers return that you're also liaising with the volunteers so that again you're not just a picture on a poster you're a face you're a person and you're there to support them and bring ideas to maybe the staff that you a library member I mean, excuse me, a volunteer. And then the next step out would be as you're in the library and as you're at the tent, the, the, the uh, community, you're seeing the patrons. So the idea is, yes, we take treats and we split it up so it's not such a burden. And the two larger libraries, we have two board members fine. And it's, it's the idea is that you go to these things and then when we have a report out at the end of our meetings, we don't want to report everything, pick some highlights and let us know what's going on in the different branches. And before we go into any discussion, I do want to tell you that the assignments that we had pretty much follow what we did for the holidays. And I would uh, represent as the lead liaison. Uh, Civic Center would be Frida and Janet. Mustang is Sheila Collins and Fred. Appaloosa is Marna. And Arabian is Sam. So, with that, let's discuss. You have hands being raised? Yep, sorry Amy? about that, Chair Raymond. It looks like um, Marna has her hand raised. Great. Marna? No, I'm sorry. I think I lowered, I tried to lower my hand. I get confused on the hand raised. No, hand don't thing. feel bad about that. I think everybody does. All right, then it looks like I'm going to now lower hand. All right. It looks like then um, board member Smogusky has her hand raised. Hi. Um, yeah, no, I think this is a really good idea. Um, when I was able to be a library bon volunteer at Civic Center, um, I, you know, I had numerous con comments from staff and even from public just saying, well, I never see the board members. Do they attend things? Um, and, you know, we, st we started, we started um, attending events. We talked about that. Um, Kira, you told us of events going on. We wore that button, but I think now um, it's, it will be important. I think it's important for the board to, to be visible when we can be visible again. 
and just let people know we have to walk a fine line. I think you have to be careful that that the staff doesn't um, um, go to us versus go to their supervisor if they have a concern, that sort of thing, because that that's not our role. But I think our presence will be greatly um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Anyone else? Uh, this is Sheila Collins. I'm not sure that my hand is raised, but because um, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking and I, I guess not. But if I if I still can have the floor, I just really commend this. Obviously, um, this was something I began initiating in the, my last term as chair, uh, following up on, on Janet's initial suggestion and um, so much credit to her. But I, I think anytime we can humanize our board and, and put names with faces and mm -hmm. um, just show support and um, having forging a slightly closer relationship with one branch than another. We can't be all things to all people, but um, I think it's a great idea. Good. Chair Raymond, I'm scanning everybody. I don't see any other hands raised at this time. I think the other thing to point out, or I want to point out, is you're not you're not chained to your branch exclusively. I welcome you to go to any of the other events going on. We have some big events that are held at Civic Center just because of location and because of available space around the library. So we do outdoor events. I encourage you to go to those other events. And if you have questions or issues with you know where you've been placed please let me know. Um, Kira, you have a letter that um, has the assignment. And since we've discussed this at the meeting, I think it would be appropriate to go ahead and send it out to the branches. I know we were holding it to, to uh, make sure everything was okay. Yes, um, yep, we can do that. And we'll make sure it's all updated to reflect um, what you noted tonight. Perfect, thank you very much. I, I encourage all of you guys to go out and have some fun when we can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay, the next part oh. is the director's report. Go ahead. Oh, this is Janet. I just wanted to interject. Um, we may want to think about, since we do have new board members, which is wonderful, um, we may want to re redo and have the, the new buttons made and make sure that everyone gets them. Because basically, and the friends are doing this, you know, basically saying, you know, I'm a board member or li I'm a library board member. Um, doesn't necessarily have to have our name or anything like that. But then if we do attend events or when we attend events, people will know that we're on the library board. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. That's a great and idea. Also, I wrote that down. Um, and on that, um, like off topic, but not really, um, the library board posters will be redone um, once the new position or once the next position is reappointed, hopefully Janet gets reappointed, and then we can redo those posters and put those up in the branches. Is that correct, Kira? That is correct. So that way they can see who we are before we walk in the door. They know who the name, they can put the picture to the name of the liaison. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then we go ahead with the director's report, um, Kira. Okay, thank you very much, Chair Raymond. I just wanna make sure everybody knows this is information only. We cannot discuss this. If there's something that comes up in the library report, please make a note of it and we'll put it on a future agenda item when we have that um, agenda item come up at the end, which is, um, well, right after the director's report. So we can identify that we wanna put it on a future agenda for discussion. Kira? All right, Chair Raymond, thank you for mentioning that. And for those of you who probably already seen this, I was in a summary mood when I put this presentation <laughs> together. So hopefully you guys enjoyed as much as I did and um, can get in the spirit of spring and summer. Um, so yes, this is the library director's report for today's meeting. And uh, before I jump in, I wanted to make sure to say um, happy Administrative Professionals Day to Amy Herring. That is today. And when she was deployed to the city clerk's office, I did the library board um, um, 
we did the library board solo without her support. And I must say having her back is greatly appreciated for all the work that she does. So Amy, um, I didn't put that slide in, but happy, happy day to you. And thanks for all that you do. Um, next slide. So here is going to be what I cover in the report. Um, as Chair Raymond mentioned, um, I got to have a new role and was promoted to being the community services administrator. So my next slide, I'll talk about what that means for me and for the library. We're going to talk about the Pony Express and give an update on those numbers and metrics. Um, as we continue through the pandemic, COVID in the library, we're going to talk about the library um, board chair term. I've been doing some work on that. In-person library programming, library statistics, library card campaign, and the library board sunset review. And then finally, our new streaming service canopy. So that's a highlight of what I'm going to be sharing with all of you. Next slide. So community service Services Administrator Kira's new role. This is a promotion for me and I'm very excited about it. What, what this means is that I am going to ultimately um, oversee the, the Parks and Recreation Director position and that department will be under my purview as will the library. Um, one of the things that's important to know is that the Parks and Recreation Department, similar to the library, has a director. The current director is going to be retiring at the ending of this month. So one of my first projects in my new role is to hire a new Parks and Recreation Director. And in terms of the library, right now, for right now, I'm going to continue to serve in both roles. I'll serve as the library director as well as this. I mean, my position is community services administrator, but I will still be supporting as a director for the library. That will not always be the case down the road. The library director position is still here. It is not a position that is going to be taken away. So eventually down the road, and the senior manager said, Kira, what does down the road mean? When is that? I don't have a date for that right now. Um, my opinion is that I report to um, Assistant City Manager Bill Murphy, and what it sounds like to me is a part of my role is to kind of help take some things off of his plate. Um, he oversees community services, the water department, public works, which is a lot, a lot to manage. So with me being over the libraries and parks and recreation, I think that that will help him give more focused attention to these departments. But the first thing that I did say to him was that the library does need focused support from a director. He understands that. So again, down the road, and I will continue to push to find out what down the road means, the library director position will be filled. So that is the good news. Um, so really right now, because parks and recreation will have a director, some of my roles and responsibilities in terms of community services in the library and parks and recreation are going to be a, are going to be new in nature. This is a new position. So what I'm envisioning is taking some of the higher level things in parks and recreation, bond projects, they've got a lot of that going on, um, maybe um, personnel issues, things of that nature. I will help support that director with those types of things while doing my work at the library. Um, the good news for the library is, and the way that I shared this with my staff is, I am really thrilled, all of you, to be at this level. And, and I, I've been with the city for 31 years, and in all of my time, um, I don't think that there has been somebody in a position like this working closely with the assistant city managers, city managers that has worked in the library. So one thing that I really plan to bring to the table in this new role is to continue to advocate and promote for the library services. It's going to really be nice that I can see both departments and things happening in both departments to make sure that things are equal and both departments are, you know, getting what they need to be successful in their service. So there's a little bit of unknown as I move forward in this position. I'm excited about it. I'm also going to be honest about it. And I've asked the staff to do the same. I think there's been some concern. I like to call concerns right out as I see them that, hey, does this mean now the library is not going to be getting attention? You're going to re be really busy with other things. And yes, I'm taking on some additional responsibility, but I have a lot of support. Again, there is going to be a Parks and Recreation Director. So that position will take uh, basically the bulk of the work. Um, I have got a strong library team. We work very well together. They're very honest with me. I'm honest with them. So um, 
it is going to be good. And I'm excited about what this means for the library. Um, and just wanted to make sure I shared this with all of you. And I will continue to keep you all updated, especially as it relates to when a new library director um, can be hired. But in the meantime, it is me. And I'm glad that it's me because I really feel that this library has made some significant progress. It has been such a thrill to work with this team. This system has, in my opinion, really grown. We've been trend setting. Um, even with the Pony Express, I've been so proud when other public libraries from across the country are now calling us to say, how did you, how are you able to do this? How is it working? So good things are really happening. And I am really thankful to be able to continue my work um, at the library. So that is what I am doing in my new role. Next slide, please. Okay, now on to the Pony Express. And Mandy Carrico, I'm hoping that these are the right numbers. We had to do some updating here. So Pony Express has been successful at Appaloosa. So far, nearly 893 um, patrons have registered for this service. So everyone, that's getting close to 1,000 people registering for this service. Circulation as of 421. Um, 3,913 circulation items. So as we know, circulation increases when our public can have access to coming into a library to browse and check out materials. And since um, April 18th, we've had 1,550 people come into the building. So while we have a lot of people, um, you know, we've got a lot of people registering. And as you can see by this number, which I'm sure Mandy will confirm, continues to grow as people get more and more comfortable with using this service. Um, recently, the senior staff, actually varied staff, worked the front area of Appaloosa because we were finding there was a little bit of confusion with the public coming up to um, Appaloosa, like, is it open? Oh, what? wait, what? I need a special card. So we wanted to be out there to make sure to educate patrons on um, what the service was, how to use it. I know my time that I sent there, I heard wonderful comments from the public coming in. It was nice to see caregivers with children coming in. So I think that uh, the future is bright, bright with this type of um, library service. But as I always say, this is not, um, not how we want our libraries to normally operate. It is very important to have library staff on the floor to provide help, um, get people to resources, provide programming. But in a pandemic, to open up the doors of a library, Pony Express has met that goal. Next slide, please, Amy. As we continue here to kind of mention COVID-19 and our hopeful recovery, um, we did have the governor's executive order on 325, um, you know, which was really lightening up some of the restrictions. We were a little bit worried about what that would mean for the library in terms of any confusion with the public about wearing masks. Um, luckily, and uh, again, Mandy, Melissa, anybody jump in, our patrons have been very respectful of this. One of the things that we did have to change because of this order was prior to the order, we would really require that people would wear their masks even in the drive through so that anytime you were engaging or interacting with a library a program or operation, we would ask that you would wear your mask. With the executive order on 325, really because people were outside of a government building, we really can't enforce that. Um, we highly recommend it. Um, so that's been one change, but really we continue to be diligent and to make sure that the board knows public libraries are government buildings. So we continue to require the public unless they have a medical reason to wear a mask. And we are still being very COVID cautious and following all of the protocols um, recommended by the CDC to keep things safe and keep our libraries open. I put opening libraries on here um, because the senior managers and I met to talk about our priorities. And one of the things we really want to focus on is opening up our library system. You know, like I mentioned before, we had a public comment about when is Arabian going to open, you know, right now, still Tuesday, Thursdays. Um, there is not a library building open. So we're going to really focus on opening up libraries. That, of course, means getting some staff back to do that. And we just want to be careful that we don't expand too much without the staff support, because then we know that people will burn out and we won't be able to provide good service that way. So our goal is to continue to um, push to get some of our staff back so that we can open up our buildings. And um, I know that the city manager is aware of this because he mentioned libraries specifically at the council meeting last night about how important it is as you know we continue to open back up that we bring the staff back. So that will be our priority. 
Also, the good news is um, that Westworld in Scottsdale is going to be a COVID-19 vaccination site, and that work is going to be starting, I believe, tomorrow, Thursday, April 22nd, and run through the 30th, that you can get on and register for a vaccine. City employees are able to go and get vaccines there. They can volunteer. I know that Amy is going to be volunteering, I believe, on Friday, and at the ending of her six-hour volunteer shift, she will get her vaccination shot. So that is really, really good news for for city staff and for residents of Scottsdale to have a convenient vaccination site right here. Um, on that note, I'm going to do a little plug here that we are also, Melissa and her team and library staff are going to be out at Westworld because as people get their shot, they have to wait around for about 15 minutes. So the public library is going to be there in that waiting area to say, while you're here, do you have a library card? And if they're willing, we're going to get people signed up and give them information about the public library. So that's the good news there. And then we, of course, continue to focus on health and wellness um, really right now, even though things are looking more positive than they have, there's still a lot of stress with people um, and worry and families have been impacted by COVID-19. So we always want to keep health and wellness of our employees and the public um, front of mind. Thank you, Amy. Next slide. This is also very exciting in-person programming. I know Melissa touched on this at our last meeting, but since that time, we have done our pilot um, in-person outdoor youth programming and have a plan for down the road to offer in-person adult programming, most likely in the form of getting back to um, weekend movies at the auditorium where we can do um, social distancing in the Civic Center auditorium, potentially Mustang, but I know for sure at Civic Center. So the next slide is going to show a picture of this was um, all of us leading the Books to Boogie out on Civic Center lawn. And Melissa can tell me for sure, but this was a program where we called it Enroll to Engage so that we had the public, once they knew where this was, they would have to sign up. It filled up with a waiting list, but people were very respectful. They came, they checked in, they found their little social distance appropriate spot out on the lawn. And we did Books to Boogie out there. And it was really wonderful to see all the little people. I know the little boy in front of me had his cape on and they were just getting down with Books to Boogie. Um, one of the other ones that um, we did was at McCormick Stillman Railroad Park, and I think there were 85 people. As you can see in the pictures, we kind of cone off an area that we know we can accommodate in social distance, but if the public comes and wants to participate and they can keep social distance outside the cones, um, that is up to them, and these, again, are free programs. So the Railroad Park had 85 people um, in enjoying the um, program at the railroad park. So nice to see the public getting to enjoy library programming. And we were thinking about some of these little littles, um, probably some of them might not have even had an opportunity. What did Amy, I think, called them, the, you know, the COVID toddlers that they might, this might be their first time being in a program because of COVID-19 and everything being shut down. So very successful with the in-person programming. Library card campaign, one of the metrics that we've been noticing, and you all have heard this before, is that we have had a decline in library card holders. There are a lot of reasons for that. We make sure to maintain a strong, clean database. So if there is a library card holder who has not used their library card for over two years, um, we try to make sure to notify, but we will purge inactive library cards because we want to know who, who is using the library. So while we've been doing a lot of things really well, we we want to focus on increasing the amount of library card holders and we want the public to be using the library. So we are going to be doing a library card campaign starting in September that is going to run for three months. Of course, you can always get a library card and we're always pushing for that. But in September, which is library card month, we are going to launch a very specific campaign where we are going to be focused in the community at um, different events, grocery stores, all sorts of things to be able to promote the public library and get people to sign up for a library card. So we are really hopeful, library board, that you will be able to support us in this effort, whether that means a couple of board members, um, you know, at a Safeway or um, helping us out coming to an event. For example, the McCormick Stillman Railroad Park is having the summer concert series. I talked to the supervisor there. Could we have library card night where everybody coming there can have the opportunity to visit the library table and get a library card? So we are very excited about the library card campaign and we are working out the details. So more to come on that. Next slide. 
these are just some of the library stats I thought you all would like to hear. And I'm sorry, I feel like the slide is a little bit confusing. Um, these are key library statistics, fiscal year 2021 year to date. Um, there's a few in there that are not that, but as reference to the library cards, that first one there is library card holders. So right now we've got around 90,000, whereas compared to last year, you'll see that red number is what we had last year to date at this time was 127,338. So there is a decline. We know that COVID has been hard hit, you know, has been hard on a lot of organizations, libraries included, um, but we'd like to get that number up. Circulation, you can see that 1.2 million compared to last year to date at this time was 1.6. And then here's our drive-throughs and curbside is the third item there. And that this again is not a year to date number, this drive-through and curbside number, that is the month of March. So really strong service there. That's 11,190 in one month using the drive-throughs system-wide and civic center curbside. The next one there is gate counts. Now, of course, gate counts, um, and this gate count number does include the drive-through, but everybody knows that the system has been operating significantly reduced hours, but right now this 181,000 compared to last year at this time, 639, you can see by that number, um, the severe impact that COVID-19 and library closures obviously has had on our gate count. So those were just a few. We track a lot of metrics, but these I thought were pretty key and I just wanted to share that with the library board. Next slide. Sunset review. So this happens, I should know how many years that this happens. I think every three years because I believe Chair Collins and I attended this at the last time. But basically this is just a review of the library board that happens with council. And this is scheduled for Monday, June 21st, 2021 at 4 p.m. So Basically, in a nutshell, the library board chair and the library director will attend this meeting with council. Probably this could probably be virtual this year. And they talk about the library board, the work that the library board is doing. Um, I don't think that there is any cause to worry about the library board being sunset. I think we are going to continue on strong, but wanted to make sure that the library board knew about that. And Chair Raymond is also in the loop. Next um, slide. We've been talking a lot about the library board chair term and updating that. So I spent a lot of time working on this. I worked with the city attorney um, on the ordinance that has the language that outlines uh, the parameters for the library board chair term. And really what I found out that the library board is uh, one of the few that has um, where you cannot succeed concurrently, you know, so you can't be the library board chair for one year and then be voted in to succeed yourself, as you all know. So um, really some positive feedback on the ability to change that ordinance, but the city manager's office really recommended, they said as part of the general plan, the city is looking at all boards and commissions and rules and bylaws and ordinances associated. So Kira, can you please wait until the council does a work study where we're gonna talk about all this, then any of the changes relative to boards and commissions will go to council all at one time to be changed. So that is the update with that. And next slide. Um, this is our new streaming platform, Canopy, and at our next meeting, which will be April, May, we are going to have Bethany Ronberg come out, who is our e-resources librarian. She will do a much better job about talking about this service, but this is a pretty big deal, she says, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that Canopy is a video streaming platform for libraries serving communities with one of the largest and finest collections of films in the world. Globally, online video is the fastest growing resource for entertainment and education, and with Canopy, public libraries have the opportunity to offer patrons a convenient solution for accessing thousands of films that not only entertain, but that also educate, enlighten, and inspire. So we really, we have Canopy. We are very happy to have it. Bethany asked that I mentioned in my director's report that Canopy for Kids, which I have a little image of here, is amazing. So. Um, again, Bethany will be joining us as an official agenda item in May to talk about this canopy service, but everybody check it out. And next slide. So that's a lot, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, and again, I know the next item is if you have any questions or something that needs to be agendized, I know that Chair Raymond will field that next. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Kira. Congratulations on your new position. Thank you very much.
You're welcome. Um, okay, so as she said, is there anything that you'd like to put on the future agenda? Please raise your hand so we can um, take care of that matter right now. Chair Raymond, I'm fielding the hand raises. Thank you. I'm not seeing any at the moment. Wow, that means we've done a pretty good job on these agendas then, haven't we? Yeah, that's really good. I, and um, Chair Raymond, do you mind if I mention some of the things that um, I know are on the radar just so that the board can hear them for future agenda items? And Amy, you may help, have to help me remember, um, but some of the things that we had listed down was number one, Bethany's e-resources e presentation. And we're also going to invite architect Doug Signor to come to our meeting to talk about a new display that is going to be going up in Civic Center Library celebrating Scottsdale organizations. So if you're um, okay with that, we will invite Mr. Sidnor to come and present to the library board at that time. Absolutely. Okay. And Kira, I think the one other item would be hopefully a preview of the Civic Center Plaza. Thank um, you. Renovations, which is pretty okay. exciting. Master plan of the Civic Center Mall. Yep, that will be the other item that we would like to suggest. Thank you, Chair Raymond. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so now is the time for us to uh, have board member reports. Board members may give a brief summary of current events. This is information only. We cannot discuss them or vote on items that are not on the agenda. And they would have to be put on the meeting agenda for a future item so that we can be consistent with the Arizona open meeting law. So anyone raise your hand if you have something to report out. I do have a couple of items, but I'll wait. Okay, um, it looks like board member Smigelski has her hand raised. Yes, I will. I'll try to make this as brief as possible. I just wanna give my monthly report on the friends meeting. The friends um, were awarded um, the Southwest Literacy Grant, which is for $3,000, and it was to be designated for the story time room. So that was really good news. Um, the um, AZ Gives Day, um, there were 20 donors for the friends, and there was $1,340 awarded. And that will go for the second grade reading um, card program. So that was also really, really good news. The friends are working with the uh, Scottsdale Gallery Association. And um, it was agreed that the friends could be on the Gold Palette Art Walk in October. And they will be a featured group. They plan on being there. And this might also, Peggy um, will have, Peggy um, Sharp Chamberlain will have more information but this might be something that the board might also be interested in attending with the friends. It would be um, on a Thursday night um, at the 30 different galleries. Uh, Peggy is also hoping, and this is my last item, to have another airtime with an author event uh, sometime this spring, and it'll probably at Kara's Cara suggestion be um, outdoors at the Civic Center. So that is my report. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Anyone else? Are there any hands oh, raised? I think here? that there are hands raised. I'm sorry here as we're, let me see if I can see participants. Okay, it looks like um, board member Klein has his hand raised. Hello? Go ahead, Hello. Fred, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is more of a comment than a report. Um, I think it would be helpful, at least it would be helpful for me, if some of uh, us board members could be involved in the planning of some of these library projects, uh, even as observers. Uh, this has been done at other commissions that I've been a member of, including the Parks Commission. Uh, being uh, being a uh, presented with a, an accomplished fact and then asked to comment is one thing, uh, being involved in the planning is another. And I would like to see the staff uh, uh, help in instituting this a little bit more receptive to, uh, to, uh, to board member input at a time when it might 
mean something. I don't know if this is a future agenda item or uh, simply a suggestion, but uh, I thought I'd mention it here. And Fred, this is Kira. I took note of that. So thank you very much for um, sharing that. And we can certainly, I know we had board members involved with um, strategic planning. So things that are appropriate, we can certainly um, invite you to observe or participate again as appropriate. So certainly, thank you. I think this library uh, board membership campaign would be a, a good uh, opportunity for this. If one of us could sit in and hear what's being discussed and maybe make a comment or two, I think that the whole board would benefit if, if one member was uh, was dubbed to do this. Very good point. Thank you, Fred. Anyone else? Okay, let's see here. I have Fred, and I think that that looks like that's it. I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, so then really quickly, um, one is that Janet has applied to be reappointed to serve our library board. And if you would be willing as library board members and staff members, if you would um, send a message to city council, maybe send a, or maybe a email or a phone call, leave them a message, voicemail, and put a good word in for her on her behalf and encourage them to select her for reappointment, that would be great. That is up to you as an individual. Um, our next meeting is going to be on May 19th, it is going to be a virtual meeting. We will at, uh, look at that time or near that time to evaluate whether June is also going to be virtual, keeping in mind that July and August, we are on summer break. So um, we'll keep that in mind, but just letting you know about um, the plan for the meeting at this time. Okay, with that, I would like to have someone make a motion, if they would like to, to adjourn today's meeting. And Chair Raymond, I don't know if this is just Board Member Smoguski. I think Fred had his hand that's still up, but I bet you that's from a future comment. So um, uh, it's another yeah, mistake. I, I, uh, this is Janet. I just wanted to um, thank everyone um, that's on the board, all the library staff. It's been a pleasure and an honor uh, being on the library board. I hope I'm reappointed, but I'm not sure what will happen. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed, but I really want to thank everyone for, um, for the welcome, uh, willingness to all work together. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. And Chair Raymond also looks like um, board member McLendon has her hand raised. Just move to adjourn. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Marta. Can I get a second? No second. Okay, and then we need to do a roll call vote. So Chair Raymond, um, aye. Vice Chair Janet Sigelski. Aye. Board Member Sheila Collins. Aye. Rita Hartman. Aye. Aye. Bud Klein. Aye. And Marta McClendon. Aye. With that, everybody be safe, be well, and we will see you virtually on May 19th. Thank you, Thank Chair you Raymond. So nice to see everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good Thank job, you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.